All right, so before we get started, I just want to talk about your tackle. Now, when you're quote unquote blind fishing, you're fishing areas that you don't have a machine to tell you where the fish are. And fishing shallow, right? The obvious stuff, stuff that's, that you can see with your eyes, right? That you can just inspect and tell and visually find. Like the obvious area. And today we're talking about docks. Now the three lures that I always have on my deck here, a Cinco, a Wacky Rig Cinco. Black and blue is like my go-to color. If not black and blue, then black and red. It's a swim jig or a flipping jig, doesn't matter. Just because I fish this lake often, I can get away with the quarter ounce. But if you're starting off, I say go with three eighth ounce. That way you can like practice uh, skipping. It's a lot easier to skip with three eighth ounce. But once you get the hang of it, quarter ounce works really well. You can put any kind of trailer behind it. Me, I got the ballsy baits. You know, the new craw that I helped design. And then I also like flipping docks, right? The outskirt of the docks. Uh, 17 pound test, 15 pound test. A quarter ounce quarter ounce and maybe a wacky rig as of right now this is my setup these three three setup here is what i always have on my deck when i'm fishing quote unquote blind right skipping docks flipping lay downs flipping weeds like weed lines that you can see and having a pair of polarized having a pair of polarized helps a lot too okay it helps you identify like what kind of vegetation you're working with what kind of lay down how far the lay down sticks out um the pole right the structure of the the dock itself so having a pair of these does make fishing a lot easier. So yeah, I'm not talking. Let's get to fishing because I'm itching to set some hook. Stay tuned. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's so hard. That's a nice bass right there. Yeah. Holy cow, dude. That's a nice bass. I'm putting him in the wild for pictures. Look at that thing right there. That's a nice bass. Dock fishing, baby. We just started the day. Man. Awesome start of the day. Alright, so I guess I'm going to talk to you guys before it gets too uh, windy and busy. Um, like what am I doing today, right? I am flipping docks and skipping docks. It's very hot. We're talking about 95 degrees. It's so hot out. Uh, this water temp stays warm around the upper 70s. And these fish are gonna look for shelter, right? They're gonna look for shade. Uh, sh I was gonna say shed. They look for shade. They look for covers. They look for areas to ambush uh, bluegills. If you think about it, it's so hot. There's a lot of pressure out there. They're going to force into these areas that most people aren't going to fish anymore because one, it's very tricky. Two, it takes time. And three, technology, right? Everybody's relying on technology nowadays, which is not a bad thing. Uh, I'm not against technology at all. But as you can see here, I'm not using anything. Everything is coming from a visual perspective right now. And this is like the obvious stuff that you can fish, right? If you're like me, you don't have, you know, any expensive technology to help tell where these fish are located, then... You can do things like this that was going to help you catch more fish. Uh, the when and the where is very important. Uh, the water clarity is good. So just knowing all these knowledge is important. Uh, the reason why I like fishing this way is because I like to challenge myself and I like to see if I can 
uh, figure out where the fish are located or when they're hanging out. So just being able to just like fish around docks, it's very important. It's a skill set that I believe a lot of angler must have. You can see them out there on the on the graph and they won't eat. And sometimes they're in this stuff right here that you can trigger them to bite. Yeah, I, know, I don't know a lot of people who skip docks anymore. I mean, I still do because I'm broke. <laughs> I don't have a fancy live scope and stuff to see where the fish are located. Just being able to put your lure in tight areas like that, it's, it's like very critical, you know? Like this side right here. Now the sun isn't up like crazy high, but it's high enough to force these fish to hide in here or race into this area there at least. And there's a shade in there, so and sometimes you just gotta, you know, come back and do round twos around them, you know. Maybe they're in there, but they push back real tight to like the darkest spots, which is okay, because then you come back around and figure them out, you know. But me, I like to make sure, oh jeez, but me, I like to make sure I target every single angle of the dock. Like, I don't race to go to the next one at all. Why? Because the bass could be hiding in one of these squares. And there are times where I hit up every single one of them, and they're right at the last one. So... You just never know, you know, you got to give it time. And you know, when I'm targeting a dock, I like to come from the outskirt of it, like as far as I can, as far as I can reach it. I like to fish right on the outside first before I start digging in. Because sometimes putting a bait on the outskirt, the more aggressive one will come out and grab it, land that one, and go back and flip in there and there's another one. And you know, flip, skipping the bowl away is a little harder, but I like to do it because I like the fall of it. So... Having an even spool is very important, guys. That way you can flip and cast accurately. I have about like 50 yards left in here. I'm gonna take it all out and re-spool it. That's a new line. If you're wondering, I'm using 15 pound test floral. No stretch. I'm flipping 15 pound test at least. This rod has the perfect forgiveness for me to not break off when I set the hook. Unless it's a pipe. Limited on time because these uh, watercraft people are going to start coming out soon. As they already are. <laughs> you hear them. There are two things that bass fishermen hate the most during the summer mosquitoes and those people out there. <laughs> uh, they just wake all day long, man. I'm tying on a quarter ounce tungsten flipping weight with a 3 yacht Gamagatsu. I'm using a Akuma DTR Custom. These are my fa all time favorite rods. Like, I've been using these for two seasons now. It's a medium rod. It's great for plastic because you kind of don't want to like tear the hook or the plastic out of the fish's mouth. So, uh, that softness uh, from the tip does give that forgiveness, but the backbone is like perfect for you to you know, stick them when you need to. Now, should I be skipping dock with this rod as a starter? No, you wanna go with something shorter, like a 6'10 or a 7 foot, uh, medium heavy, that way you can drive those fish out. But just, you know, from my experience, I've been skipping dock for a while now. Um, I like the challenge of like that forgiveness. I might flip that bait in there, not necessarily skipping it, but like flipping it under the dock, swinging under the dock, and it'll fall really slow. Uh, that quarter ounce allows the bait to fall a little slower than normal. That allows the bait to stay in the strike zone a little longer and that forces the fish to like just check it out and pick it up. Um, you go 3 8 too. Believe it or not, I like going, when I fish shallower than this, I'll go 3 8 ounce because I like the bait just drop it instantly hitting the bottom. Those bass will just pick it up right away. Uh, but slow fall on deeper docks, but some, for my experience, it works a lot better. So yeah, let's see if we catch some more bass. Like that guys coming from a different angle. Jeez, it's a skinny smaller. My lake smaller. Nice. A little skinny guy, but still fun. Oh, 
don't know where, buddy. Took me by surprise. Let's go. That's a nice one. Fish. Put them in the well for now. For pictures. That hooks that though. <laughs> oh, so awkward. We are going to let these bass go. It's only been three hours, so. There you go. Nice bass. A three pounder, two pounder. Going back. Beautiful fish. Look at this big guy right there. See ya. Slide me as heck. Um, I'm gonna go and fish the swamp area for a little bit. I don't know how it's gonna go, but. Man, this wind came out of nowhere, and yeah, it kind of messed up the pattern that I did want to fish. It's just too windy over there, so we're gonna go find some calm area and flip some like lay down and stuff like that, see what happens. Stay tuned. And that's a wrap i actually wanted to fish it a little longer but the wind just picked up like crazy i'm talking about 
20 miles per hour wind. I have no idea where that wind came from. It's just, it said 10 to 15, which was doable, but out there was just white caps and it was getting rough out there. So the point where like my cheeks was hurting, you know, because the wind was just beating on my face. Yeah, I think that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys learned something today. Again, I have nothing against electronic. I'm just trying to teach you guys ways to fish and catch fish without expensive gear, right? As you guys saw while I was fishing up there, I had nothing up there, okay? My, my electronic up there is actually broken, so I just kind of left it there and haven't like taken it out but i was just you know visually fishing i was visually fishing just searching destroying flipping plastic uh throwing random stuff to, uh, around docks and all that and it seems to be working so with that being said if you guys enjoyed this video hit the subscribe button leave comments down below hit the thumbs up and i'll definitely do more videos just like this until then i'll see you guys next time